it's the next level. Red Riding Hood? <clears throat> I'm a Sokovian fortune teller. Wow. That is so... Rad. Lame. Lame. <laughs> Worse than the costumes Mom made us the year we got typhus. Guys, you look me. That's not exactly how I remember it. You probably suppressed a lot of the trauma. Welcome back to the show, panelists. I'm Mark. And I'm Ben. And this is going to be a spoiler-filled episode of Season 1, Episode 6 of WandaVision. And the episode that we're going to be covering is All New Halloween Spooktacular. So, obviously, Ben's here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you say spoilerful? Spoilerful. Shit, because I didn't watch it yet. Ah, oh, man. Which is hell? really going to put a detriment on this conversation. Uh, yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> no, I watched it. <laughs> I was up until 3 a.m. to watch it. So. Yeah, I think we all were. So with that, the synopsis for uh, this episode is an all-new Halloween spectacular. Disturbances on Halloween separate Wanda from Vision, who looks into an anomalous activity in Westview. So that's kind of vague, but... But there is so much going on in this episode, and Ben and I both know, and I'm pretty sure if you're listening to this, you're probably not spoiled because you actually watched the actual episode. I hope so. I hope so, too. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've watched the episode, because one, if you're an MCU fan, why would you not have by now? Or not, you know, oh, I'll, I'll just wait till the end yeah. and just binge watch it. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. Don't, yeah, that's what, it, you know, it's funny, like, there are shows that I like to just binge, uh, Cobra Kai being one, I like oh, to yeah. just push through it. This one, as much as it pisses me off that we get left with cliffhangers <laughs> at the end of every episode, I'm actually enjoying waiting. There's a part of me that actually likes having to wait a week to find out what's happening next. Yeah, same here. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of water cooler talk that we could actually talk about at work or with friends and just, oh, what do we think? What do we speculate? And we just go on. And that's just it. Like, as you watch a show like this, you know, when you watch the first episode, you wonder what's going on and you create theories in your mind as to what's happening. And then, mm -hmm. you know, the next episode, you know, a theory could be tweaked slightly and then you become you come up with new theories or an old theory went out the door when you binge something your brain really just doesn't have the time to process all of that it's nope. literally on to the next episode until you everything is revealed at the end so it's with a show like this i'm liking the week-to-week -week basis because it's it brings back that whole okay what is happening like it's it's it makes you think more when you're watching a show like this that is throwing so much at you on a yeah. weekly basis. So, I mean, I had theories in episode one and mm -hmm. two because they aired back to back. And then I developed new theories by the end of episode three. Episode four, I got excited for new theories as old theories went out the door. This week, I have, you know, episode five yet again threw us a zinger with, you know, with Quicksilver appearing at the door. And now, you know, with episode six, I have a theory I've had since episode one is now being tweaked and, and changing. I have a whole new theory that's completely strange. <laughs> so, and to anybody that knows us, like, we have conversations about this on the regular. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you and I haven't really, we talked in length about episode five. Oh, yeah. We really haven't talked about episode six together. Six, yeah, yeah, not at all. And, and, I th and I think that's probably going to be best going forward until the end of the series because yeah. it's going to, as much as we want to talk about it, I think you and I should probably not to keep these conversations 
interesting. talk about it at all yeah. in between. Correct. Because otherwise it just becomes repetitive. While it's new to everybody else, it's just yeah. like, oh, we already talked about this. Like, why are we talking about it again? Exactly. And for the listeners listening in, Ben's going to be on till the end. And he's going to be on till the end of uh, WandaVision at this point. So hopefully we'll get another three Maybe, Maybe four, because <laughs> there is that rumor. Yes, I don't. I don't know how much truth there is to it. There is a rumor out there that there's a potential secret tenth episode that's going to drop. I don't know. The only thing we know for sure is Kevin Feige has said that the next three will be hour long episodes, which will be amazing for the yeah. fact that even though this was only what thirty five minutes at most, it really gave so much into the story of what's going on mm -hmm. and you really have to go deep dives into what's going on and how they're presenting the subject how we're viewing wanda this whole world that she's created and then how everybody else that's on the outside is actually coming in and looking and viewing and actually getting involved at this point because we already had monica now now we have somebody else so, you know, with that, we're going to move in and we're going to go into basically our our first impressions of the episode. So, Ben, what was your first impression? So last week's episode, you know, episode five was such a great episode mm -hmm. that I, I honestly there was a part of me like between everything that was revealed in the episode with Vision and then, you know, with Evan Peters appearing at the end as that version of Quicksilver. Yeah. There was honestly a part of me that was like, how are they going to top this? Like, this is already so amazing. Like, I stay again. It was another episode. It's probably <laughs> going to be a weekly occurrence at this point where I stayed up until 3 a.m. because I'm on the East Coast. Yeah. To watch the episode. And then it was so good that I was like, well, how am I supposed to sleep after that? This week, so, you know, I went in with maybe kind of lower expectations because I was kind of like, well, how are they going to top last week? Yeah. And then I watched this week. I stayed up till 3 a.m., mm -hmm. watched it again. And I, I don't know why I questioned the MCU's ability to out top to over to out, out top themselves. Yeah. Because this episode out topped last week. There was from the opening sequence until the end, I, like I was completely engrossed and drawn in. Yep. And there is so much in this episode as far as Easter eggs and potential storyline. And I say potential storyline because that's what leads us into theories mm -hmm. that like it was almost an overload. Like I didn't know. I don't know how they packed so much into 35 minutes <laughs> and <laughs> that it took multiple viewings. And I still don't feel like I've absorbed it enough that I'm going to watch it again, even after this conversation. Yeah, well, there's so much that we could actually just deep dive in even after multiple viewings that we could actually get more out of mm -hmm. and then deep dive. And uh, I hate being like the Riddler of everything, but, you know, there's so many questions, so many questions. <laughs> and, there's and a ton of questions. Yeah, there is. And my overall view was I, I love the episode based on a whole with the whole comic costumes and it being centered around. Halloween, and we get the true Vision and Scarlet Witch costumes as we got from the com the comics. I just love how that uh, Wanda puts a twist on it, um, for both parts. Wait, I mean, you, I mean, you put you hit the nail on the head too with it being Halloween. It's like it's almost as if the writers room were like, "How can we put in over a hundred Easter eggs into a twenty minute segment?" Yeah. Oh, let's just make it Halloween. Yeah, exactly. Then we could just throw a ton of shit in the background. And we can market on this, too, yeah, by the way. <laughs> exactly. Well, and also then Pietro being the typical uncle that is a bad influence on the kids. So, uh, you know, the typical uh, Uncle Jesse, but a little bit more humorous in that aspect. And then plus the fact that we get Vision trying to break out at the very end and we see what the outcome that has. And I, I just love, like, we get a beginning, we get we get an end it starts off as pretty kind of funny but at the very end it gets very dramatic and very yeah. dark and you know what's like you know what's funny too is i don't know if i heard it from you or have heard it in multiple and like in other places but like mm -hmm. you mentioned you know pietro coming in as like the uncle jesse of the episode mm -hmm. i didn't get that like i i never once thought uncle jesse because uncle jesse was not a freeloader no uncle, he wasn't uncle jesse you know 
paid his way. He lived in the attic. Like he, you know, he was a part of the family, but he paid his way. He was a, a viable member. Mm -hmm. Quicksilver in this episode is a total freeloader. He's sleeping <laughs> on the couch. He's a bad influence to the kids. So I don't, I, I, I don't get the Uncle Jesse reference. I think it had to do with the, the, the leather jacket in the very beginning when we first saw him in episode five. So more of the rock star look. The rock star look, exactly. Which is what Jesse, Jesse was. represented. Okay. Yeah. I could see it that way. That, that was the only aspect, but then he became completely different to even the character that Aaron Taylor Johnson did in Age of Ultron. He had a little bit of humor, Aaron Taylor, but you know, with Evan Peters, it, it's kind of different completely so this is a character that we do not know from either the mcu fox or even within the mcu movies that we saw mm -hmm. so there's something that's not right there and and yeah <laughs> I, i'm gonna have to wait until we actually start discussing because there is something that's really throwing me about this version of about something that yeah. happens and it's in my top five so I'll, I'll wait till we get to that point because it really I don't want to say it throws a wrench in one of my theories, but it really, it really shakes it up a little yeah. bit. So I don't know. And again, that's one of the reasons why I'm loving this show is because I will, one episode, I will be dead set that this is what it is. This is what's happening. I know it in my heart. <laughs> and then by the end of the next episode, I'm like, son of a bitch. bitch. It, it wasn't, wasn't that right. at all. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Now I think it is absolutely this. Now it's not this anymore. Like, what is happening? Yeah, well, you know. And I love it. They, they I love, love it. They twist everything, even from the comics to the MCU. They kind of mishmash, and they kind of create their own, which is pretty cool. Kind of similar to The Walking Dead at certain points, because they've gone way beyond that at that point. And, you know, in The Walking Dead, you have people that were dead that are still in the show. And with this, they're changing out the course of events within said comics. I mentioned House of M. Jason brought up another Vision particular short story or 12-part issue series that came out in Marvel where it was all Vision's world where he had his own cybernetic family. Mm. And they incorporated that within this said show. But I think this, you know, honestly, I, I, I think th we are in open realm at this point. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not pulling from one place. They're pulling from a ton They're pulling of from a bunch of different places for this. Yes, exactly. And, and it's all coming together so well that it's just, I can't, as much as I say, I love this being a weekly show and, and, and like, <laughs> I, I get pissed that I have to wait a week. Well, the, the, that's the benefit behind this, I think, is for the fact that we do get a weekly show in a sense we're used to binging at this point mm -hmm. with everything that's going on in this world. We're used to getting everything dropped down at one time and we could just binge watch it. Now we have to do this week per week. And it's amazing. I just love the idea. I, I, the fact that you have to wait, but th the half hour long, I'm like, oh, you, you're making. I need me more. Yeah, I need more. Exactly. Yeah. I, I want at least an hour at least. That's or why I'm excited that the next three episodes are going to be an hour. Yeah, it, it made me. You know, it's like uh, I, I know I do this when I, when I work in retail services and I come to a house and somebody threw their Wii controller through their TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the the attitude that a lot of people have. It's like ah, ah, I I need to have this now. Yeah, but but we don't get it. But the thing is, is that we're given a lot of stuff within even in a half hour. So they thought it through. I think with the the screenplay, the scripts, and everything, and how they were going to present it. And this one I was looking forward to mostly because it was a Halloween episode. So I really enjoyed it. And what I and what I love about it too, you know, what makes it even cooler is that, you know, everything that we talk about in this episode, mm -hmm. in this episode of Panels to Pixels, about this episode six of Wandavision, half of it will be meaningless. <laughs> yeah. When we talk about episode seven next week, exactly. Uh, it will be meaningless. Yeah, because there'll be other things that are involved within said episodes. Yeah. Or and, that and episode itself. And half yeah. the theories that we come up with this week will be thrown shot out. down and thrown out <laughs> next week. And I, I love it. I, I love, love it. it so much. 
Oh, well, with that, we should get into our top fives, at least. Oh, if we have to. Yes, we need to. <laughs> Where is he? Where's your dad? Hey, don't sweat it, sis. It's not like your dead husband can die twice. <laughs> All right, you should go first. Well, I mean, you kind of touched on it a little bit already, and it, this one of my favorite things about this episode, and this isn't the theories or anything else, and I apologize because I actually... I haven't looked at your top five, uh, so I don't I don't know what yours are. So if I have a feeling we're probably both going to be sharing a bunch of the top five for this or similar yeah. or similar. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you, you kind of touched on it already. The costumes in this episode are so fantastic. I mean, for anybody who is a comic book reader or a comic book fan, these are true geek out moments yes from you know scarlet witch showing the her version of the comic book to visions being nothing more than yellow spandex and green gym shorts you know with a hood over top of him yeah um and a little cloth stone hanging in front of his yeah, forehead door wrestler <laughs> yeah which i love the fact that they said that like oh, i know how much you love luchador mexican wrestlers i'm like oh so that's how he's explaining why he's wearing spandex like that's fantastic <laughs> you know quicksilver sporting the 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 the, the you know the blue, the light blue costume from it Correct. even down yeah. to wiccan and like that is almost a spot on Wiccan costume from the comic books. They've been doing that for the past two episodes because they've been putting in specific colors within. Yeah. Yes, within the the series. So, listeners, if if you want, you could actually look at the comics and look at the comparisons. You'll see color dressings within the kids that are in, and then you could see it. It's amazing. I I just love the idea. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, the, the, the twins are looking... I mean, the only one who was not sporting his actual costume was, I think, Tommy, right? Tommy is speed. Tommy is speed, yeah. Tommy is speed, yeah. I, sometimes <clears throat> I get them confused. Uh, I get Billy and Tommy confused. But Tommy wasn't sporting the, the speed costume. He was sporting Pietro's si similar outfit. Yes. Yeah. Which came in really cool when it turned out that he sported his abilities in this episode exactly you know so i i can see aesthetically why they kind of did it but i mean it he was the only one that was missing his actual comic represented costume yes but i was okay with it like it Same didn't here. but it didn't bother me at all i was really honestly out of all the costumes wanda's looked amazing Oh, yeah. Um, Visions was just fun. I mean, it looks like something someone would have put together to cosplay cheaply at a Comic-Con. Yeah, they got it from Joanne's Fabric, and they yeah. just created it uh, with a sewing machine and said, all right, here you go, here's some makeup, and there you go. Yeah, they went. it was a combination of Joanne Fabrics, Coles, and Party City. Yeah. You know, to put together uh, <laughs> to put together Visions' costume. But, I mean, Billy's Wiccan costume, like, th that to me was like, he's Wiccan. Yeah, that like, is very representative, but we don't get that until the very end of the episode, too, where we get to see who he is. When we get to see his abilities. Yes, yeah. exactly. I mean, comic book readers already know who Billy is going to is going to become. They already exactly. know they already know he's going to be Wiccan. Yeah. But costume wise, yeah, like the costumes just were just amazing to me this episode. That I mean, that's I had to start with that one just because it was just it it was a true geek out moment for me in this episode seeing those costumes all right uh that was your number five so my number five will be the whole malcolm in the middle montage in the <laughs> yes. very beginning i just love how the credits you know that pho is represented as himself <laughs> how the whole beginning is pretty much like a malcolm in the middle episode but you know just lacking that whole brian cranston you know he really should have had made some sort of cameo as a neighbor amazing. or something it, it would have been cool but the fact that the way the kids introduce the episode and how they're talking and they're breaking that fourth wall mm -hmm. yeah and then next thing you know they, they're talking about the their uncle pietro or peter that's like oh he even snores cool and, and then he does the whole thing, and he's speeding. He's showing his abilities within yep. within the first scene. And they're aware of it. The kids are really embracing it, too, which is pretty cool. 
Well, I mean, even, you know, yeah, that was another that was another great geek out moment for me, too, because <laughs> I, I loved Malcolm in the Middle when it was on. And, yeah. And, you know, seeing that opening and knowing within like the first three seconds of the opening, I'm like, oh, my God, this is Malcolm in the Middle. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> but even like not even just the opening and breaking the fourth wall, but the camera style of very similar yep. of the beginning of the episode. I mean, they kind of kind of went away from it by the second half of the episode. But yes. In the beginning parts, like that scene with Pietro lying on the couch pretending to be asleep with Billy and Tommy in the background, mm -hmm. where you can, it's clearly focused on both Pietro and Billy and Tommy with that little bit of blur in the yep. middle. That's signature Malcolm in the middle. Like they experimented with that shooting style. And it actually, I mean, it had been used in movies before, but like th that actually is a specific style of shooting that requires two different camera lenses hmm. when you when you shoot. And it hadn't been used in television until Malcolm in the Middle played with it. So for them hmm. to not only take the breaking the fourth wall and the opening, the style of the opening, but mm -hmm. to also take the camera style and yeah. the shooting of the episode, mm -hmm. like that to me is, it's it's brilliance. Well, did ABC put out Malcolm in the Middle? That's a good question. Uh, n I think Malcolm in the Middle was Fox. Um, I could be completely wrong on that. Um, I'm checking right now as we speak. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I don't remember exactly who put that out. But then again, you know, if you think about it, Disney owns Fox now. That's very, very true. <laughs> it, yeah, it was a Fox Network sitcom. Okay, so yeah. they could always take and just have these guys analyze it. They've already bought Fox. and So Disney's technically, they would own the rights to Malcolm in the Middle. Exactly, and anything and then how they filmed. So that, that's which, pretty cool. Which now makes me wish... And hope they put it on Disney Plus, Plus. at some point. Yeah, exactly. Because I want to go back and rewatch <laughs> Malcolm it. in the Middle. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that. It's a good point. You know, with that, with it being a Fox sitcom, Disney now owns the rights to it. So yeah, they, they could they were able to use that opening and hopefully drop it on Disney Plus at some point. That would be amazing. I would love to do that. Just binge Maybe. watch Malcolm in the Middle. Maybe that was part of the point was like, <laughs> hey, let's <laughs> remind this. people of Malcolm in the Middle, get their hopes up for it, and event, and once WandaVision is over within a month or two, we're going to drop it on Disney+. Plus. Exactly. That'd be cool. So you number four? Uh, all right. So going on to my number four. See, I have a top five, but I don't have them in any particular order. That's fine. Uh, actually, I have one that is definitely my number one. So we're going to hold on to that. Um, it My number four... She doesn't appear in this episode very much, mm -hmm. uh, but I want to talk about Agnes a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. I think we've got further confirmation in this episode that Agnes is Agatha. Really? I, 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 I think Agnes is Agatha. There's a couple different little nuances? Easter egg. Yeah, and nuances. Uh, the opening title sequence is one of them. When oh, we with see the kids in the, in the video camera montage, right? Yes. Okay. In, in the in the opening sequence, when we see Agatha, right. Agatha is revealed in the opening sequence as technically part of the family. She's in the house. She's in the opening credits, mm -hmm. uh, even though we only see her one time in the episode. In the opening credits, she is wearing purple. Her entire outfit is purple. You are correct. Agatha, Agatha Harkness, her signature color in the comic books is purple. Hmm. Not only that, but when we see her again at the end of the episode, when Vision wakens her, she's dressed like a witch. Mm -hmm. Her Halloween costume is a yes. witch. That's what and, was a dead giveaway in the trailers, too, by the way. And she lets out a signature witch cackle, which, granted, Ag you know, Ag Agatha Harkness is not that kind of a witch. She's more of <laughs> no. the, the witch. Yeah. But they are hinting more and more and more that Agnes is a witch. Yes. And I have... I, I I I just think it's further confirmation that she is going to end up being Agatha Harkness. Not to mention the fact that out of everybody on Sword's Wall, if people identified, she's not on there. Yeah, we mentioned that last week on the podcast yeah. when Jason and Paik and I uh, I brought that up. And everybody said, yeah, she's the only one that nobody had a license or identification to. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> I also, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm trying to remember the name of the character. The other character 
I'll, I'll, I'll have it in one second because I'm looking it up. Yeah, <laughs> good. I, I completely forgot. Um, but he's the one dressed as Frankenstein yeah, in Herb. this episode. Herb. Is Herb on the wall? What? Like, that's his, his goal is to be on a wall all the time when he was cutting through it at that time? No, 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 no. It went with the characters identified on Sword's wall. Yes, yes, he was. So Herb is on the wall. Yes. Because Herb yes. also kind of has that premonition that he's, that there's something going on. Yes, he does. Like Agatha. Mm-hmm. Or like Agnes, rather. Yeah. yeah. Where nobody else does. So mm-hmm. I also think there's something going on with Herb, too. Or he was a plant, or he was maybe the person that was put in there by sword. Um, Oh, he could be the informant! There you go. Oh, I never put that together. That's we we haven't heard anything about this informant because uh, over the past two episodes we have not said any they have not said anything about an informant that was put in isolation or He's whatever. Jimmy Woo's informant. Oh, I think that's a good call. Yeah, I so, think that's a good call. So that's the only thing I could get out of it. But Agatha is you know I've been saying it from day one. She was always somebody that I thought was Ag- uh, Agatha Harkness. Yeah, you've been saying that for a while. Yeah, but... And like I said, I just think this episode further confirms that. Okay. So... So that, that was my number four. That was your number four? Well, uh, my number four would be uh, Pietro was not like the Pietro we knew from the MCU. I already brought that up. Uh, he is really more comedic and points out a lot about Wanda in front of her, especially when Wanda like brings up they they brought up the whole halloween he goes well you're remembering it wrong sis you know mm-hmm. uh, when with the the whole uh the fish, the fish. in the bag and <laughs> yep. you know the diseases that were involved and she goes hmm i don't know <laughs> it's like okay something's wrong there it's like either that's repressed feelings from her and somebody knows something and is going deep diving into her brain or you know it's one of those where somebody's just pulling at something that they know from the culture of sokovia did you happen to notice another easter egg in that scene with the flashback to when they were kids no i i only remember them how they were dressed yeah and that's the easter egg did you notice who they were dressed as no i didn't get that black widow and nick fury Ooh. Pietro is literally wearing a black overcoat with an eye patch. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was a good one. But I mean, it, it kind of dives into like, you know, when when Wanda has that memory, mm-hmm. she's imagining herself and her brother as two people that she knows. Exactly. She knows Fury and she and she knows Black Widow. That is true. So, yeah, I mean, her and Pietro as kids are dressed as Black Widow and Nick Fury. (laughs) So it's tying into the outside world again. It is. Uh, Her mind is warped at this point, from Mm -hmm. what we can tell. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's Again, there are so many Easter eggs in this episode that it's tough to, to find them all. Oh, yeah. And your number three? So, my number three, you, you, you brought up Pietro, so I might as well yeah. dive into that one uh, for, my, for, my, for my number three. I want to talk a little bit about that conversation between Wanda and Pietro mm-hmm. when they're sitting on the hay bales in the center of town. Mm-hmm. This is another kind of breaking the fourth wall moment, but not in the sense of like looking at the camera and speaking. Mm-hmm. They're talking about what is happening around them in the sense of realistically. Yeah, like, within their world. Within their world. Yeah. You know, Pietro is talking to Wanda saying, like, you know, I, I, I understand what you're doing here, why you're doing this, where were all these kids, you know, before, where 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 were you hiding all these kids before, which ties yeah. into last week's episode. Yes. With, you know, Wanda, you know, where... Where Vision actually accosts her and tells her, hey... Where are the kill? Where are the children? Where are all the children? We only the park see is our empty. kids. The park yeah. is empty. Yeah. So now this comes to comes to fruition, mm-hmm. and now there are kids everywhere because Vision kind of called her out on it. But one of the things that really throws me in this episode is the fact that, like last week, we saw that Wanda had the the Vision. Was it last week or two? No, it was two episodes ago. It was episode four. Mm -hmm. When she turns around and she sees Vision, but she sees dead Vision. 
She yes. sees the the stone ripped out of his forehead, Correct. purple and or you know, you know, and dead. That she's recalling something from her memory in seeing vision that way. A reality. Yep. This week she the same thing happens again. She turns with, with and Pietro. she sees, and she sees Pietro with the gunshot wounds. Yep. She never saw Pietro. No, shot. she didn't. So where is this vision coming from? Because she never saw Pietro shot. She never nope. saw his body. All nope. she did was feel it. Hmm. So how is she able to turn to him and she's getting this this vision of Pietro dead when she never saw it? It's her feelings be rep uh, being represented within a vision, I think. Not to point upon to it. But regardless, uh, she... I think she felt it back then. But whoever is being the puppet master at this point is doing this to her. And I think he... So you whoever, still think there's a puppet master? I still think there's somebody slightly behind the scenes. Mm, yeah, I don't... I, I'm, I'm still thinking that we're, we're edging up to, uh, you know, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And, oh, we are. We definitely are. And I'm not thinking it's Mephisto anymore. I'm thinking it's Nightmare. That could be interesting. I mean, I, I definitely do think there's an influence outside of Wanda. I don't know if it's necessarily a puppet master. I think it's somebody who kind of led Wanda to, like, like kind of pushed Wanda in a direction to do mm -hmm. what she's doing. I don't think it's somebody forcing her to do it. I think no, it's no. somebody who kind of said, kind of influenced her to do it. Subconsciously influencing her. And now she's doing it on her own. And then now she's being more aware of her subconscious at this point. Yes. Yes. So, but it's interesting, you know, that Quicksilver, uh, you know, this this version of Quicksilver, whether it's somebody else or, you know, pretending to be Quicksilver or this really is a manifestation of Quicksilver that she mm -hmm. created, he's able to know that this isn't real. Like, he himself knows this isn't real. He knows this is a creation. Hmm. Is this your Doctor Strange idea and thought? So I, yeah, I do have that. That is my theory for for the listeners out there because I haven't been on to talk about it. My, yeah. There's the theory. There's multiple theories as to who Quicksilver is. There's the theory that Quicksilver is the Quicksilver from the X Men universe, like he mm -hmm. actually is Quicksilver. Uh, there's the theory that Quicksilver is actually Mephisto in you know taking the form of Quicksilver. And then there's my theory, which is I think. Because of how this is going to tie into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and how in Spider-Man Far From Home, mm -hmm. Fury reveals that Strange couldn't be there to help fight the elements because he's already on another mission. And we know WandaVision falls between Endgame and Spider-Man Far From Home. Yes. So my theory is that Quicksilver is actually Doctor Strange. I think he, he has gotten himself in there, and he has... He's in there to help Wanda through whatever this is that she's going through. And by taking the form of Quicksilver. Yeah. I, I'm modifying my theory this week. <laughs> I still, there is a part of me that still thinks this could be strange. Because whoever this person is, again, knows that this is not reality. He knows that this is created. But here's where I'm modifying my, my, my theory. Every single person in there is an actual person. person. Yes, is an, with the ex, with the exception of Billy and Tommy, uh, they are they are real. They're real now, but they were created by Wanda. Correct. Everybody else in there is an actual person. Even so who, Vision. Even well, yeah, because it's Vision's body. We yeah. know that from last week's yeah. episode. Exactly. This is actually Vision's body. Yes. So. Which will lead me into another theory that is, <laughs> is getting modified as my number one. So whoever Quicksilver is, is an actual person. Whether it's somebody who entered the Hex or somebody yep. who was already in the Hex. Wanda just formed Quicksilver around that person. Wanda is the one that made this person take the form of Quicksilver. So while I think there is still a possibility this could be strange, what I think might have happened is, as we found out when the... The guy wearing the hazmat suit went in, turned into a beekeeper suit. Monica Rambeau went in her uniform and turned into 70s clothes. I think Strange went in with the intention of being Aaron Taylor Hall's 
Doctor Strange or Quicksilver, but when he entered in, it's Wanda's subconscious that changed him into this version. Yeah, yeah I, I, well, also, also, and to twist that, we also have the Fox universe, which could be an alternate ver- universe. That's where he got the inception or idea or vision of who, what Quicksilver was or who Pietro was. So, oh, this universe, that's what Pietro looks like. So I'm going to take the Evan Peters version. And he looks similar. He's got the hair. He's got the white hair and everything else. And he's got the the jacket. But the thing is, is the fact that he expresses himself as, can a brother get a hug from his sister? So with that, I guess Strange kind of factored the wrong well, no, but that's what I'm saying. I, I think my theory is that he went in intending to be the MCU's version of Aaron Quicksilver. Aaron Taylor Johnson's version. But, but, but Wanda changed him. He didn't change himself into Oh, that. okay. Because anybody who's familiar with Scarlet Witch in the comic books knows that con- Wanda is a constant in the, in the multiverse. Oh, yes. In every version of the multiverse in the comics. There's something different. No. Yeah. Wanda is the constant. She's the Wanda, constant, but everything else is different, though. Everything else is different. Yeah. Wanda is always the same. She's the same, but everybody else is different in appearance and looks and how yes. they... Yeah, yeah. The, people can people can look different in other multiverses, yeah. whereas Wanda, being a constant, always looks and is the same. Exactly. So I think the, the, the Fox universe definitely ties into this in that Wanda can pull from other universes but again i think because she's changing everything that comes in mm-hmm. to the hex i think she's the this is if my theory is right we're probably <laughs> going to find out next week in episode seven yeah. that it's not strange at all because strange will show up so i know that but if my theory is correct and this is strange i think there's a possibility he's wearing the face of evan peters because wanda put that face on him yeah and he's just trying to cater to her but he said he's going well, along with it but there there but oh but there's this one thing that i have to say okay uh he goes uh during when they sit down at the uh <laughs> when they're, they're by the hay and he's loving and enjoying the whole westview look and and halloween and then you know then later on, he says, hey, don't sweat it, sis. It's not like your dead husband can die twice. And then boom, boom. She, she knocks him back. And then she knocks him back. That's. Do you think that's something that Strange would actually say? I absolutely think it's something he would say. Because Strange is a cocky asshole. I mean, look at some of the conversations we've seen him have with Tony and, you know, with Bruce. Strange is a cocky asshole. Kind of like I, I, I Tony. Think he, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think he very easily could have gotten himself gotten could have gotten a little caught up in it and yeah. said something completely cocky, and until Wanda knocks him for a loop, you know, I absolutely think that's something he could have said. Wow. I don't think I, and that's the thing. I actually think that plays more into Strange's personality than it does Pietro's. I think so too, for the fact that the way he. Uh, if you watch Doctor Strange, and listeners, this is homework. Go out there, watch <laughs> Doctor Strange. Again. Again. Because you could see his personality and how he talks to people. Maybe Ben is correct in this. And he probably is correcting me in the sense that that is how Strange talks. Yeah. And that's, yeah, I I got to give it to you. That I, that is true. He, he comes off half-assed. Yeah. So again, I think that kind of plays more into Strange's personality than it does Pietro's. But the fact is, also, we also knew in the last episode that an anomaly went in with no problem. And they were able to figure that out with S.W.O.R.D. saying, hey, something went in. And I, I think Strange is the only person that could really do it. Well, I mean, Strange has the ability pretty much to manifest himself anywhere. Exactly. You know, I mean, look at the end of Doctor Strange, you know, following up with your homework. <laughs> you know, Strange is the one that was able to go. Actually, Strange was the one that was able to go into an alternate dimension to face Dormammu. Exactly. So if Strange can go into an alternate dimension, he can very easily get into the hex. Which makes me think about this whole situation, because maybe the snap actually created a dimensional divide. 
and then brought in other people like maybe Mephisto, Nightmare, and all these other people. It's a possibility. And the fact that, you know, that that was what was running and circling around my head. I'm like, well, this just happened, what, weeks after the snap? Back. Yeah. So who knows what Hulk had snapped and said, I want everybody back. Um, Speaking of Dormammu, did you happen to see the Halloween decor, the Dormammu Halloween decoration on the lawn in one of the in the background of one of the scenes? I saw. Yeah, it was there's like... a big. In, it's one of the big inflatable. <laughs> yeah, ones that looked very much like Dormammu in the background. But again, you know, we talk about Easter eggs and what they mean. That could very easily be an Easter egg tying this more to Doctor Strange. Yeah, exactly. With his mind and his thoughts within mm -hmm. Wanda's world. So, so I mean, again, that's my theory that this Quicksilver is actually Doctor Strange in there to help Wanda. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to follow up every theory I make with it's probably wrong, but... I'm probably hey, wrong, too, with Nightmare. It's, it's a theory. I don't know. I mean, at this point, it's fun to theorize, but I'm along for the ride yeah, no matter what the result. <laughs> yeah. No matter what the result, I am along for the ride. But that was my, that was my number three. Oh, okay. Was that conversation, and it was more along the lines of, you know, my difference in theory w about Quicksilver and Wanda having seen Quicksilver shot, even though she hadn't seen it in actual reality. Yeah. Well, my number three would be that claymation commercial with the shark, with the kid, with the old play. That traumatized a couple kids. <laughs> really? I know some people who were like, yeah, my kids were not about that. Wow. Oh. So, I mean, it's a claymation person turning into a skull. Yeah, exactly. It's Ugh. it's a little dark. It is dark, but, you know, this is not really... I think the show has gotten to the point where it was meant for family. Now it's more for adults. But that's my, just my thought. But the, the kid has to be Wanda and what she is going through. The, the shark has a voice, but I'm not sure if it's Evan Peters' voice. It was kind of a weird voice. I couldn't distinctly get it. It could be the I person that's manipulating them. And her symbolism is how she is trying to keep her reality, even though within TV symbolism of an idealistic home, it's basically consuming her. And this person that is playing a puppet master is basically doing that. They're consuming her to make their life a reality or whatever. So the voice of the shark wasn't played by anybody in particular. It was a he's basically just a video game voice actor. Oh, okay. Who voiced the shark. So I don't think the voice of the shark meant anything. But as we've seen in past episodes, every commercial that we've seen up until this point is representative of something tragic in, in her Wanda's life. life. Yeah, like Sokovia with the... Uh, the Lagos, Lagos paper towels. Yes. Yeah. Everything up until this point, the commercials are representative of something. They're basically a way for her subconscious to take a traumatic moment in her life and condense it down to a 30-second commercial. Mm. Just to help her move past it. So it's interesting because I don't know what this commercial is representative of. I, I really don't. I mean, could it be a representation of of Vision's death? Could it be the Soul Stone? You know, I, I don't know what it could be. Or it could be her, a representation of her, how she's constantly picking and trying to get this world of what she wants proper, but she just can't get it right. Or, I mean, it could be, yeah. I mean, if you look at the commercial itself, it's a yogurt commercial where the shark hands this boy a yogurt. And he can't. And he can't open it and dies. I mm -hmm. mean, it, maybe that's, you're, maybe you're right. Maybe that's a representation of like, no matter how Wanda, no matter how much Wanda tries to help herself, it's not going to work. To work, exactly. And then there's always that person that's always giving them something, you know, yeah. and they gave them, well, all these people, this world, I'm not going to say Pietro because I think we kind of figured out the idea that it's strange. <laughs> well, I don't, again, I don't know if we figured out that it's strange. It's just, there are things that kind of play into that theory. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, it's like there, she's being handed some sort of happiness at certain mm -hmm. points, but she's still grasping. She's still clawing for whatever she needs. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that you're absolutely right. That yogurt could be happiness. I mean, it's it's being handed to her, and no matter how much 
she wants it, she still can't accept it. Exactly. And so, she can't open it herself. Yeah. Herself. Yeah, Think exactly. about it. Herself. Yeah. So. That's a good representation. I didn't really put that spin on it. All right. You're, so, like you're number two. I want to talk about Haywood. <laughs> <laughs> because Haywood's a dick. Yeah, he is. I'm really honestly starting to think there is a deeper, there's something really going on with Haywood. Uh, is he a Skrull? So that is a theory that I have. I do. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me, let Did me. Did I pick your brain? No, let me, <laughs> let me take that back. That is a theory that I had. Okay. Up until this week. Okay. Last week, I believed that there was a possibility Hayward could have been a scroll. He, you know, we know that Fury is working with the scrolls now. Yeah. So, you know, he's off planet with sword right now. Haywood is kind of the, the earth version of it. And there's a possibility he very much could still be a scroll. But there is definitely something deeper going on with this character. He, when he's talking about, when he's talking to Monica about the snap, and you don't realize what, ha what we had to go through, you know, to, to make Earth continue on after this happened. Something happened to him during the snap. Yes. He, he lost somebody or he lost multiple well, people. He mentions something that in happened. his speech. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the, the interesting thing that I dug up in my rewatch of this, because there's a particular scene I paid a lot of extra special attention to, and it was with Monica, Darcy, and Jimmy um, after they've already been kicked out. We saw last week the the footage of Wanda going in and taking Vision's body. Mm -hmm. We also found out this week that Sword was the one who had Vision's body. Correct. And had it apart. Mm -hmm. Then in this episode, we see that Hayward is not following Wanda in the hex. He's tracking Vision. He doesn't give a shit about Wanda. He's, He's tracking looking for Vision. Sentinels? No. He wants Vision back. Because Vision was intentionally supposed to be a controlled weapon from S.W.O.R.D. Ah. Without Vision being sentient, they would be able to control him. True. So that's what he was. He was a weapon that Sword was building for their own use. Wanda came in, took it, took it into the hex, and now Hayward is following Vision because he wants Vision back. Sword is not there to get Vision or to get Wanda. They, they that get was Vision. Made, that was made evident last week when he was willing to take Wanda out with a missile. Uh. He's there for Vision. <laughs> his priority is Vision. He wants his weapon back. It's also why at the end of the episode, when we see Vision falling to pieces, trying to yeah. escape the Hex, mm -hmm. he's not concerned. He doesn't give a shit about Vision's set, Vision being alive. Uh, he, doesn't, yeah. he doesn't want Vision to be alive. No, no. And what really put the nail on the, you know, what really hit the nail on the head when it comes to this is when you look at the files that Darcy digs up, the, oper the, the one file that she finds is called Operation Cataract. Cataract is a membrane over the eye that subvents vision. Correct. Yes. Oh, it, wow. That's why the name of that operation was Cataract. cataract. It was to yeah. control vision. <laughs> so there is, there's something deeper going on with Hayward here. He is there for a purpose. It's vision. It's not Wanda. Well, and hmm. I think in some ways that kind of makes him a villain to this story. A, a bit, yeah. Uh, also, uh, a secondary villain, but the a secondary also, villain, yeah. Yeah, if you think about it, too, what does sword represent in the MCU? Sentient weapons. Exactly. Yeah. So they're gonna wind up trying to take control of this sentient weapon, mm -hmm. and I think with what Jason and Pay and I spoke about last week, you know, Jason brought it up and just bringing it up, you know, that vision is a sentient weapon. Mm -hmm. So they're going to wind up trying to control him, like you're stating. Yeah. A lot of people had these theories of, oh, it's going to be uh, going to have the Sentinels. You know, we're not going to have all, you know, Bolivar Trask come in at any given time at this point. This not is anytime all, soon. Not anytime soon. But no. the thing is, is also that we're we're just concentrating on what's going on now and what's going on with Vision and her and and everything else. My question is the whole thing with. Spider-Man Far From Home and him coming back 
and J. Jonah Jameson. Is that something that's uh, a ripple effect within the multiverse, you think? You mean, could the, could the ending of Far From Home be caused because of everything that's happening in WandaVision? Correct. I don't really see how that plays into multiverse, though, because that was something that Electro released to J. Jonah Jameson. I don't know how that ties into multiverse at all. Not Electro. Uh, Mysterio. Mysterio. Sorry, Mysterio. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, don't see, yeah. I don't see how that ties into I, I'm, multiverse. I'm just curious because we never heard or ever heard of J. Jonah Jameson, even in the Spider-Man. Oh, you mean J. Jonah Jameson himself being yeah. there. Yeah, it's a it's a possibility. Um, maybe J. Jonah Jameson is another multiverse constant. <laughs> Hopefully, I mean, maybe he did come from another universe, and that's why he was in there. Or, you know, I thought it, at the time it was just something the direct the producers did to kind of throw, you know, a little fun thing in there for the fans. But maybe you're right. Maybe it does tie into the multiverse. Uh, you did your number two, right? That, yep. Uh, my number two, well, we already talked about this. Pietro's talk to Wanda about him being there and Wanda asking about his accent. You know, he states yeah. all that he remembers <laughs> is that he was shot and that he heard screaming, you know, heard her screaming his name. And I think that's a, a very interesting topic for the fact that maybe these are things that are in her memories that, that whoever is involved is going through. Yeah, it's it's, again, it plays into my... <laughs> Quicksilver is strange theory, but again, I'm probably wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we shall see. And your number one? So, my number one. <laughs> and I have to preface this because, again, this is my first time being on for WandaVision, so you know this theory of mine, but yep. not everybody else does. My theory of this is that, my original theory of this, is that by the end of this series, Vision will be very, be very much alive. He's going to walk out of the hex because his consciousness was transferred into Wanda through the through the means of her destroying the soul stone soul stone or the the um the the mind stone. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, his he was going to be restored and he was going to be able to walk out of the hex, no problem. Yeah, I'm changing that. Uh, <laughs> because we saw what happened when Vision tried to walk out of the hex. Yes. And it didn't exactly work out in his best favor. Nope. But I'm also changing my theory in that I don't believe anymore that his consciousness existed in Wanda. I don't think it I don't think it was transferred to Wanda. I don't think so either. I, I think, think it was still innate in his No. I think his consciousness is gone. I think because if you think about it, everything that we've seen from the past couple episodes with Vision comprehending everything, and then even this week in his conversation with, with Agnes mm -hmm. about how Agnes had to remind him, you don't remember the Avengers, you died, he doesn't remember any of that. Vision at mm -hmm. this point is a golem for Wanda. Everything that want everything that Vision remembers and knows is what Va is what Wanda, Wanda knows of Vision. It's Correct. not what she wants of to Vision to know. It's everything that Wanda knows about Vision. So anything that Wanda doesn't know about Vision, mm -hmm. with the exception of him dying, because she doesn't want him to know that. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of mix of both. It's what Wanda wants him to know, and it's what she knows of Wanda. Because yes. Wanda doesn't know how Vision was created. Vision doesn't know where he came from because Wanda doesn't really know that because she came in later. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know all the details because Tony's the one that created him, not Wanda. Okay. I, I think everything that Vision knows is everything that Wanda knows. So if from Wanda does this world, yeah. Yes. So if Wanda doesn't know it about Vision, if it's something about Vision that Wanda doesn't know, Vision doesn't know it either. Correct. Okay. Because she's giving him these memories. She's giving him, yeah, the But you life. can't give somebody a memory that they don't know themselves. Mm. Vision at this point is literally a golem of Vision. He's yeah. still not yet the... And I say not yet because I think he's going to be at some yeah, point. He's, by the he's end. already creating his own life, his personality, his... I still do think intuition. it's... I still do think at the end of this... Vision is going to survive and be real, as but, do I think the children are going to be real. Yeah, but Vision won't be the same Vision we no, knew from before. Yeah, it, it kind of harkens back to the comic where they 
Vision decided to shed all anything that had to do with humanity. The Wonder Man thoughts that his brain was based upon, anything of his kids, his past history with Wanda, everything. And he became a white droid. Mm-hmm. That That's all it was. And that's all he knew. It's just to be. And then he became a, a different character after that. But he was completely white. And that's we, we talked about that last week, which is pretty interesting. I, I think you're right in that respect. And and, it, and it's not like that vision is not going to be a part of what's going to happen later on in the Marvel or the MCU at this point. Yeah. So, I mean, I, it's just basically my number one is me modifying my theory. Mm-hmm. I still think that vision is going to emerge from this and be again real in the mcu yeah i just don't think he's going to be the vision that we know we knew no no he's gonna be completely different he's gonna have to learn some things again yes the life that he and wanda had before this uh he's not gonna remember it he doesn't remember it now he's not gonna remember ultron he's not gonna remember jarvis he's not gonna remember tony he's not gonna remember bruce because all of them were part of what the original vision was Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, too, uh, with the whole hexadecimal thing, the Mind Stone was hexadecimal. A lot of the visions that we've gotten within the past few episodes had hexadecimal markings, even when they would look at Westview. Well, because, I mean, and again, it kind of plays into something I had mentioned to you before, too, is that in everything that Wanda is doing, you know, Vision was able to survive. He was created around the Mind Stone. Correct. And there were hints in... Infinity War and Endgame that yeah. Vision could exist without the Mind Stone, but it was never it never came to fruition. So they don't know really exactly how it's happening. He would just do a whole restart, I think. But but in Wanda, it, it, the question remains now because you can see the Mind Stone in his head mm-hmm. in recreating Vision's body and putting him back together and giving him a consciousness again in this world. Is she, in fact, and we do see the Mind Stone is in his head. Yeah, when is he she recreating that Mind Stone? Is she, cre- is she recreating an Infinity Stone? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Would that also bring in the possibility that Thanos comes back? We could see Thanos again. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised at the very end. Uh, you know, no, I don't think in during WandaVision we're going to see Thanos, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it just, it, it really. There are a lot of questions that are unanswered. There is. When it comes to this, that I really hope we get answers to. Yeah, we're acting like Jim Carrey and Batman Forever and going, have so many questions, so many questions. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah. So, my number one was basically, I just had to kind of revise my, my vision theory because of things that happened in this episode. My last one, which would be number one, would be the, you know, Vision unable to get out of Westview, as you you were talking about, mm. without tearing him. But he starts to tear himself apart as he's going out. She's, he's getting pulled back layer by layer. And even Darcy sees it and asks Swords, you know, Sword to help, but they don't want to at that point. Because they yeah. don't want to get involved with Wanda, what's going on. But when Wanda is aware due to the kids and makes the wall larger and trapping others... Which yeah. I, I cannot wait to see who Darcy's going to become in this world. Exactly. Same I here. I really can't. <laughs> Which makes me think, too, because I have to go down to uh, one of my notes regarding this. Well, you know, wouldn't it be fun? Because, you know, she goes into there. You start to see carnival stuff. Now, that's kind of reminiscent because we know Evan Peters was in oh, it's American, a circus. American Horror Story yeah. Freak Show. Remember that? And then on top of that, we got killer clowns from outer space. Well, see, I mean, I, I, I'm just looking into things, but you know, I yeah, thought it I was think, pretty I funny. I think you might be diving a little too deep into <laughs> things. Um, I basically took it as in like, you know, all the events of sword being out there were basically a three ring, three ring circus. Oh, and yeah. when the, and when the hex expanded, that's exactly what she what they became. You, they just turned them into that. Yeah, they, they became a, an actual circus. Yeah, because you saw the, the guys X. turn into to, to clowns as yeah. they're running and stuff like that. And, and we see the actual military tents turn into circus tents. And yeah, I mean, it's. I think it literally became a three ring circus. Yeah, when, when she pushed <laughs> the hex back. But again, I'm really interested to see who Darcy's going to become. Oh, same here. 
Well, the question is, is does she have her consciousness like Monica did? Because when Monica asked about Ultron. Well, see, I don't think Monica had her consciousness the whole time, did she? I think she eventually developed it. I think she did, and I think that's where we're going to eventually get to that point where Vision speaks to Darcy. Oh, but then again, maybe she did have it the whole time, and she was just playing into it, very similar to whoever Pietro is right yeah. now, because the beekeeper, he knew who he was the whole time. So he just climbed mm -hmm. out of the sewer, and Wanda just said no yeah. and made him disappear, which we, we hmm. still don't know what the hell happened to that guy. He's probably erased from existence at, at this point. Hmm. At this point, yeah. Yeah. So. That's interesting. Uh, the way the episode ended was kind of like, <laughs> okay, what's going to happen now? But it did give me a new theory. Yeah. I, do you want me to go into it now? All right. All right. Go ahead, go ahead. So we know how this, we talked about it a little earlier, how WandaVision is pulling from a bunch of different places. And we know how in House of M, Wanda basically mm -hmm. erases mutants from existence, which I don't know if you notice it or not, and I don't know if it's in your notes. Correct. Uh, did you happen to notice the tattoo on Evan Peters' arm in one of the scenes? No. No, it's, I did not. It looks like it says mom, but there are some people saying that the first M is kind of covered, and it could actually be an H. So it's H-O-M, House of M. <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's an ongoing theory right now but here's my so here's my theory and this is the really really off the wall theory that is probably wrong when mm -hmm. you talk about house of m some people are saying like this could be a reverse house of m that wanda is going to create Correct. mutants rather yeah. than create mutants. so yeah. we saw that the hex was able to grow because wanda can make it bigger mm -hmm. And we saw people mm -hmm. getting drawn into it. And we've seen what happens through Monica. What happens if you enter and re-enter the hex more than one time? You get more. Your DNA changes. Your DNA rewrites. And Correct. we know that Monica is eventually yeah. going to become Photon. They're, I don't think they're hiding that at this point. This is, this is how Monica's going to get They're it. not. What if, by the end of this series, this hex engulfs the planet and it creates mutants because it rewrites dna of people yeah but then everybody would be mutants not everybody at this point. because not everybody's dna is rewritten it only happens if you're if you're again it's a weird theory but i'm just saying like yeah. what if this grows even bigger to the point where it just it creates or maybe it's just the the country or it creates a whole new just, world. It, what if, all I'm saying is like, what if this hex grows even bigger and in its growth somehow creates mutants because it rewrites people? I wouldn't be surprised for the fact that, you know, they're going to need more help. Because <laughs> we do know that Monica's quote unquote guy, I hope we're going to meet this next episode because that's where they're exactly. on their way there to now. And we know the, the the ongoing theory right now, or the most popular one, is that it's Reed Richards. Yes. So what if this hex growing and engulfing them creates Reed Richards? Or Mr. Fantastic. Or creates Mr. Fantastic, yeah. Sue Storms. Yeah, Sue Storm. Or and, he could yeah. already be, or this could just be an introduction to Reed, and then in the Fantastic Four movie, they're going to become the Fantastic Four. Eventually, yeah. because of an anomaly. So, yeah. Because that would be a little weird if, if they changed the origin of the Fantastic Four. Oh, yeah. Leave that to the Fantastic Four movie to create them. Because we saw what happens when you change the origin of the Fantastic Four in the last Fantastic Four movie. The last one with Michael B. Jordan, where they got drunk and just happened to be... No, 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 we, no, don't, we talk don't talk about that. That one doesn't one. exist. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's what ha you, We see what happens when you change the origin of the Fantastic Four. It, your movie bombs. <laughs> so hopefully I have no doubt that Feige and the rest of the team at Marvel will be this will actually this will be a fantastic new iteration of the Fantastic Four. That it definitely but will the be. But like again, my theory was just that what if this growth in the hex can create mutants somehow? I don't know how, but it's just a theory. 
All right, well, uh, we should move on to notes. Uh, do you have any? Uh, I only have a couple. I kind of fit most of my notes in. Uh, I talked about the Hex Creating Mutants. I talked about Monica's Guy. Uh, I loved that the movies on the marquee at the movie theater were The Incredibles and The Plant and The, the Parent Trap. Um, yep. The Incredibles obviously being about a family of superheroes, which Correct. turns out to be yeah. the case in this one. Parent Trap, interesting because uh, Wanda is a parent. Twins. Well, well, the twins, but also Monica is a parent and her rest of her family is trapped in the hex. Ah. True. The only other note I have is just the the fun little homage to uh, Aaron Taylor P Johnson and Evan Peters both the being kick in kick-ass together <laughs> after uh, Evan Peters walks away and Wanda says, like, kick-ass, like, to them running away. And they both say it, actually, uh, at a certain yes. point, too, yeah. Oh, and the, the I'm sorry, one more I just thought of. I love the Easter egg of when the kids run off when they're walking through town and the kids run off and Evan and Quicksilver, Pietro yells to them like be I, I'm paraphrasing, but be careful my 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 spawns of hell or Oh, that's in my that's in my I'll books. leave I'll <laughs> leave it to you then. But yeah, that's another right. one of my final notes. But that's it for me. Well the only notes that I would have after implementing into what we were talking about which be one which is a quote but makes me laugh every time i hear it which one of you is the sassy best yes. friend and that's comment from hayworth regarding monica and darcy and when they talk about the missile and that's like a whole two broke girls thing well and it's also kind of the role that agnes plays in in the entire thing she's the sassy yeah. best friend of wanda yeah, yeah. And then the next one, well, this is something that you and I would both love if it ever happened. Wouldn't it be fun if Asian Jim was uh, approached by Jim Halper in the next <laughs> episode to talk about the events? Because the guy who plays Jimmy Woo plays Asian Jim yes, in The Office. In an episode of The Office. And we got John Krasinski on the show. Well, maybe John Krasinski could be Reed. And well, I know that's the biggest <laughs> fan casting right now is it's John Krasinski and Emily Blunt as yeah. Reed and Sue. It would be fun, though, if if Reed Richards does, in fact, turn out to be Monica's guy. It is John Krasinski who has been secretly cast already at this point. Oh, yeah. And when the Everybody two of has. them see each other, they just kind of give each other like a glance. Like they know each they other from somewhere. Camera. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be fantastic. That would be amazing. All right. Well, that's all I had for notes. So uh, we we can move on to quotes. And the uh, the one that I had would be Wanda saying, "Someone should be bleeding or going on fire." <laughs> and that's after Pietro catching the kids, waking him up as if he was a vampire. Yeah. So, and then the the one that you were talking about was unleash hell demon spawn. And then Pietro when they were ready to go trick or treat. Well, that's also kind of an Easter egg to Mephisto. Because Correct. Tommy and Billy are in indeed they're well they're not demon spawn. they are demon spawn of Mephisto in a version of the comic. Correct. They're not always yeah. that way, but in in a version of the comic they are. Yeah, and you had a, a couple. No, of that's that's really all of mine. I I pretty oh, much covered best. everything I I had. Oh, the the last one I would have would be uh, a quote, and it's pretty funny. It's from Darcy when she gets engulfed by the shield. She, that she pulls a fury. Up. She goes, oh, fudge. Yeah. And that's when she's being consumed. It just reminds me and gave me that thought of a Christmas story. Well, does Ooh, she say like, fudge or does she actually curse? So she says fudge. Does she? Because oh, yeah. somewhere I, I read somewhere that she actually curses. Oh, what, what, what I got on Disney Marvel or, or Disney Plus. Oh, you know what? It would have to be fudge because they're not going to let somebody drop the F-bomb in a Disney Plus series. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, the first thing I thought, Christmas story. Well, what's after Halloween? You got Thanksgiving, you got Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. That'd be a fun little Easter egg. <laughs> It'd be a funny idea. Yeah. Well, with that, uh, we're approaching towards our end, but we got some feedback for last week's episode. So, uh, Ben, you want to take this away? Eric actually sent uh, uh, some feedback. Yeah, I can read that for you. Eric Stipes says, hey guys, dang, Evan Peters, I lost my cool and started screaming for joy when I saw him in the doorway. Peters' Quicksilver and Michael Fassbender as Magneto were my favorite portrayals from the younger X-Men movies. As a fun quote, when we first meet Quicksilver in Days of Future Past, which is a damn near perfect movie in my opinion, I 100% agree, uh, he is actually eating a red popsicle. 
This show, much like The Mandalorian, really rewards viewers for the more they know, even if it's just an Easter egg. Thank you guys for your great coverage of the show. I appreciate Mark's mentioning of storylines and references to the comics, as I am rereading and expanding my comic knowledge for this series myself. Keep up the great work. Well, thanks, Eric, for uh, following with yes. us. And I, I, awesome. I completely agree. I, I think Days of Future Past is pretty much a perfect it's the cl oh, it's the closest here. you can get to a perfect yeah. x-men movie oh definitely i love that movie and i got the alternate version too and as much as i i'm looking forward to seeing what the mcu is going to do with the x-men that mm -hmm. movie sets a very high bar very high standard yes. yeah 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 i agree so with that well to keep you guys up to date well obviously you heard Ben and I covering this episode. So what we're doing now is we're keeping WandaVision and Snowpiercer separate per episode. So there will be individual episodes. So WandaVision will be a particular episode and so will Snowpiercer with Steve and his guest. And as far as I know, that will be Cat. <laughs> so <laughs> we we might have somebody else on if Paik actually knocks at the door and comes scratching again. And we'll have him on if he wants or even Jason or any of you our other friends so uh just keep aware of that so we'll be posting particular episode threads for each episode for wandavision and snowpiercer so send it, the comments below in facebook when you do see the image of the particular episode we're covering so keep that in mind so with that we're going to move on to podcast recommendations so ben do you have any recommendations of people that you're listening to do they have to be our friends or can they be anybody? Anybody. So I am listening to, there are two podcasts that I'm, I'm really into right now. One of them I just started yesterday and it kind of ties into our, a, a little bit of an Easter, a little bit of a note that you had before. So for anybody familiar with The Office, Brian Bumgarner, who plays Kevin, hmm. actually just started a new podcast called The Office Deep Dive with Brian Bumgarner. And there's only two episodes oh. out so far. Uh, the first one was with uh, Greg Daniels, who is the creator of The Office. And the second episode is his first part with Rain Wilson, who played Dwight. Again, I, I've just started. It's only two episodes. Uh, I listened to the first one with Greg Daniels. And this is not the Kevin that you know from The Office. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't, <laughs> like, you almost, you've listened. You're like, this does sound, this sounds nothing like Kevin. And that's obviously because Brian Bumgarner is just a great actor and he plays an oaf really well. And he's not really that way. Yeah. But, like, they reveal stories that even diehard Office fans like myself have never heard before. Um, so if you're an Office fan, my recommendation for you is the Deep Dive, uh, the Office Deep Dive with Brian Plumgarner. The other podcast I would recommend that I um, I have been listening to for since it started is literally with Rob Lowe. I am <laughs> loving this podcast. He is, Rob Lowe is such a fantastic conversationalist and you can tell he's legitimately loving doing this podcast i mean and he's had people like chris pratt keegan michael key gwyneth paltrow mike myers dana carvey nick offerman caitlin jenner alec baldwin michael strahan he's had a ton of people on this podcast and every one of them is is fantastic so those would be my two podcast recommendations for this week well with me uh you could Check out Run for Your Lives with Daphne and Paik on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network with their coverage of monster movies and disaster movies. Right now, they're going to be covering a top 25 of their monster movies, so check that out if you can. Leave uh, a thought or an opinion of their podcast if you've listened to them, and then just leave a comment, and they'll get them out there. The next one up would be Field to Scream with Alex Baelish, and he covers sports movies. All those cool movies about sports with humor, commentary, and everything we like about those sports movies. I was actually just on an episode of that podcast. We talked about Little awesome. Giants. It was great. Cool. So check that out. Ben's on, on uh, Field to Screen <laughs> with Alex, so you could hear him talk about Little Giants. Yeah. Awesome. And, well, to submit your feedback, well, we could be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice you use. If there's a rating there, please... 
give us a rating or a review, or if one of those platforms has one, please do so if you can. And you can check out our new website, or <laughs> it's actually old, the <laughs> Panels to Pixels podcast, which will redirect you to our Facebook page, which would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Every week we post what we're going to be covering every week. So obviously within every week, you're going to see a WandaVision and a Snowpiercer until they end. So with that, please leave your comments below. They'll be read. If you want, you could always send an email, a regular email, to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. And that's panels two is spelled T-O, pixels, and a number one at gmail.com. With that, you could record your voice and send it through the email as an attachment, and then we'll play it on the show and we'll comment on it as well. So once you do that, you know, we'll have it. So if you could do that, Steve does it all the time with everybody else when he sends out commentary. So that's where else you could hear <laughs> Steve, by the way. You could hear him sending out feedback to everybody else's podcast. So he loves, you know, sending in feedback to you, Ben on Lost We Have yep. to Go Back Revisited. And Strange Indeed with me and Rima right now. Yeah, Strange Indeed. And as well as House Podcastica. So you could hear Steve in those venues as well, not just Panels to Pixels. So we could be found on YouTube and you can find us on YouTube by just searching Panels to Pixels Podcast. Just give us a thumbs up if you like the episode or if you really like what we're doing, just subscribe to us and you know, you'll get notified. So next week we'll be actually uh, covering WandaVision episode seven. So with that, we'll leave a post in Facebook and then you could just leave a comment below whenever that happens. So where else can listeners hear us? Well, Ben, where uh, can you So be as I mentioned, you know, Strange, I'm currently on Strange Indeed right now, uh, covering The Stand with Rima Joe, which is a podcasting mm -hmm. podcast. This week is actually the final episode of The Stand, so I don't know where Strange Indeed is going after this. Rima Joe would know. So, uh, you know, you can still subscribe to Strange Indeed because they're always covering yes. new stuff. And you mentioned uh, we have to go back Lost Revisited, which is my podcast with our friend Kristen that I do every week covering episodes of Lost as we're revisiting the series. And then I promise it's coming soon. My Wilhelm podcast, I was ready to launch and then I put the, the post out there for people to request to be a guest. And the yes. the requests were so overwhelmingly positive that I had like 25, 30 plus people request to be a guest. So now it's become a logistical nightmare to figure out who's going to be on what episodes and schedule them all. So I was ready to launch and then that happened, which I mean, it's a good problem to have. So it is. Because you have, you have so many every week. I have almost week. a year, if not more, of episodes already ready to go. <laughs> and I haven't started recording any of them yet. So I promise it's coming yes. soon. Hopefully by the time you and I are done with our coverage of WandaVision over the next three weeks, I'll finally be launching. But I want to encourage people to start following that. Facebook.com slash The Wilhelm Podcast is where you can like that page. Uh, Twitter and Instagram at the Wilhelm pod. And then of course the email for that, if you have any movies you want to hear covered or whatever, the Wilhelm podcast at gmail.com. Awesome. <laughs> well, I can be heard here on panels to pixels as always, as well as sending out voicemails when possible to my friends that do do podcasts. I can also be heard on adrenaline cinema podcast and the pirate core entertainment network. So you could check me out there as well next week's episode obviously true lies was sent out this week i already listened to it it's a good episode so next week's will be john wick 2 and i'm hoping ben that you could be on for the following week when we cover what uh either the rock or face off either one you choose you know what if I'm gonna, ch if I have to choose right here and now, let's go with the Rock. All right, let's do that. So you heard it here first. <laughs> I've been re itching to watch that movie again anyway, and this would be the perfect opportunity to do it and then talk about All it. All right, perfect. So you could hear me there as well. So I just want to thank everybody for listening and for Ben Beck being here on tonight's episode. So of course, I'm looking forward to the uh, covering the rest of the series with you. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.